I think it's actually really mysterious how the brain encodes high level desires. Sorry, how evolution encodes high level desires. Mm. Like it's pretty easy to understand how evolution would, would endow us with the desire for food that smells good. Because smell is a chemical. And so just pursue that chemical. It's very easy to imagine such a mecha- evolution doing such a thing. But evolution also has, has endowed us with all these social desires. Like we, we really care about being seen positively by society. We care about being in a good standing. We like all these social intuitions that we have, I feel strongly that they're baked in. And I don't know how evolution did it because it's a high level concept that's represented in the brain. Like what people think, like let's say you are like, you care about some social thing. It's not like a low level signal like smell. It's not something that, for which there is a sensor. Like the brain needs to do a lot of processing to piece together lots of bits of information to understand what's going on socially. And somehow evolution said, that's what you should care about. Yes. How did it do it? And he did it quickly too, yeah. because I think all these sophisticated social things that um, we care about, I think they evolved pretty recently. Yeah. So evolution had an easy time hard coding this high level desire. And I maintain, or you know, at least I'll say, I'm unaware of good hypothesis for how it's done. I, I had some ideas I was kicking around, but none of them, none of them uh, are satisfying. Yeah. And what's especially impressive is if it was a desire that you learned in your lifetime, it kind of makes sense because your brain is intelligent. It makes sense why we'll be able to learn intelligent desires. But your point is that the desire is, maybe this is not your point, but one way to understand it is the desire is built into the genome and the genome is not intelligent, right? But it's able to, you're somehow able to describe this feature that requires, like, it's not even clear how you define that feature and you can get it into that you can build it into the genes. Yeah, essentially. Or maybe I'll put it differently. If you think about the tools that are available to the genome, it says, okay, here's a recipe for building a brain. And you could say, here is a recipe for connecting the dopamine neurons to like the smell sensor. Yeah. And if the smell is a certain kind of, you know, good smell, you want to eat that. I could imagine the genome doing that. I'm, I'm claiming that it is harder to imagine it's harder to imagine the genome saying you should care about some complicated computation that your entire brain, that like a big chunk of your brain does. That's all I'm claiming. I, I can tell you like a speculation. I was wondering how it could be done. And let me offer a speculation and I'll explain why the speculation is probably false. So the speculation is, okay, so the brain, it's like the brain has those regions. You know the brain regions? We have our Cortex, right? Yeah. It has all those brain regions. And the cortex is uniform, but the brain regions and, and, and the neurons in the cortex, they kind of speak to their neighbors mostly. And that explains why you get brain regions. Because if you want to do some kind of speech processing, all the neurons that do speech need to talk to each other. And, they can, and because neurons can only speak to their nearby neighbors, for yeah. the most part, it has to be a region. All the regions are mostly located in the same place from person to person. So maybe evolution hard-coded literally a location on the brain. So it says, oh, like when, when like, you know, the GPS of the brain, GPS coordinates such and such, when that fires, that's what you should care about. Like maybe that's what evolution did, because that would be within the toolkit of evolution. Yeah, although there are examples where, for example, people who are born blind have that area of their cortex adopted by another sense and I have no idea, but I'd be surprised if the desires or the reward functions which require visual signal no longer worked. You know, people who have their different areas of their cortex co-opted. For example, if you no longer have vision, can you still feel the sense that I want people around me to like me and so forth, which usually there's also visual cues for. So I actually fully agree with that. I I think there's an even stronger counter-argument to this theory, Mm. which is, like, if you think about people, so there are people who get half of their brains removed in uh, childhood. Yeah. And they still have all their brain regions, but they all somehow move to just one hemisphere, which suggests that the brain regions, their location is not fixed. And so that theory is not true. It would have been cool if it was true, 
but it's not. And so I think that's a mystery, but it's an interesting mystery. Like the fact is somehow evolution was able to endow us to care about social stuff very, very reliably. And even people who have like all kinds of strange mental conditions and deficiencies and emotional problems tend to care about this also. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.